y'all. Today you're going to be learning all about how to get your dog to retrieve items by name. Whether it's for service work or everyday life, we can teach our dogs to distinguish between items that we may need or want and have them fetch them for us. Medication, cell phone, favorite toy, you name it, they can pick it out and retrieve it for you. This is an incredibly useful and versatile skill. Hi, I'm Laura from Doggy U, and I'm a certified guide dog mobility instructor, service dog trainer, and trick trainer. And today we're gonna be focused on teaching your dog how to discriminate between and retrieve items on verbal cue. With meds, a joke. Yes, with antler. Yes, good job. Now, you can start out by focusing on just naming one item out of all of the unnamed items in your household. This would be useful if you needed your dog to retrieve one thing like medication and for them to ignore everything else they could retrieve on the way. Alternatively, you can teach them to discriminate between multiple items. So for instance, if you need them sometimes to retrieve medication on cue and other times to retrieve water or a cell phone. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to name and teach your dog to discriminate between two separate items because it's the more complicated of the tasks. But while I show you that, You'll see that you can use the exact same protocol to name just one single item. The whole goal with this training method is to make the right thing easy and the wrong thing hard so that they can have lots of successful reps in a row. We then slowly increase the difficulty level and distractions. It's all about setting the dog up for success. So let's get started. So when we think about naming the item, we want to think about saying the name of the item and then the action we want the dog to do instead of the other way around. So that means we're going to say meds, fetch it up, or whatever word you use for your retrieve. I learned this really helpful tip when I was going through my service dog certification program with Atlas Assistance Dogs, and I really love it because if you have a dog that might interact with an object in more than one way outside of the retrieve, giving them the name of the object first focuses them on that object and then the action they need to do, versus sometimes if you just say fetch it up and you're not pointing or giving any indication, the dog is going to look for the nearest thing to retrieve instead of the actual item that you're trying to name. So so it's going to be name of the thing and then cue for your retrieve. So meds, fetch it up. Now if your dog doesn't have a retrieve yet, I actually have a special gift just for you. This channel is made possible by the wonderful patrons over on the Doggy U Patreon community. Their support is what makes these free videos possible. And what I do over on Patreon is put all of my more in-depth or specialized videos that aren't a good fit for YouTube so you can see full-length webinars as well as my unedited training sessions and how I handle mistakes when they arise. In fact, there's more than 150 of them. And every month I do a deep dive on a specific topic. So recently I did a three-part series on training the retrieve. And right now I'm actually going to open up that first part of the series to anyone who has a free membership over on Patreon. Yep, that's right. You can join Patreon at the free membership level and you'll get access to the first 50 minute retrieve webinar of my three part series, absolutely free. This will also be open to all levels of my current Patreon members, not just my inner circle like it typically is. And if that interests you, pause the video now and head on down to the link in the description to join. And again, huge shout out to my Patreon folks like Ari W and Rebecca W. I couldn't do what I do here without your support. All right, let's get back to the training. So to start with, we're gonna need to gather a few items. We wanna grab the two items that we're interested in naming, as well as a bunch of benign items, items your dog isn't super interested in. I tend to gravitate towards things that are heavy or larger or things that your dog wouldn't naturally think to pick up. You're gonna start with the retrieve item set close to the dog and the other item, I'm gonna use a stapler in this example, set further away. Again, stapler, not a very interesting object to most dogs, so it's unlikely she's going to try to retrieve it. By keeping that item further away, we make it really easy for her to be successful. Now we're gonna say the name of the item that we want them to retrieve, and then their cue for retrieving, minus fetch it up. Now, if your dog needs a little bit of a warm up, you can go back and toss that item several times so that your dog understands which item that they're retrieving so that you can be more efficient in naming it. Once your dog is successfully retrieving the item close to them with the other item like the stapler in the distance, we're going to start to slowly decrease the distance of the two items until the items are next to each other. Once your dog can actually pick out that item by name, we're going to put that item a little bit further away and that benign stapler closer so that the dog actually has to pass this other item to get to the one that we want. Next, we're gonna 
slowly add other benign items to the picture, like putting a teapot or a coffee cup. Now we're going to start adding some items that might actually be of interest to the dog. We're going to start with making the named item easy to retrieve and then slowly make it harder by putting it between the other items that your dog finds interesting. Here you can see I add a plush toy, which Whip really loves, but I start by adding it really far away and then I slowly bring it closer until the point that I can have her pass the toy to be able to bring me the meds. If they pick up the wrong item twice in a row, go back to the previous level in which they were successful and do a few reps before moving on. Once your dog is retrieving the item you want by name, you're going to repeat the process with the second named item and the benign items. Notice we're not asking the dog to discriminate between the two items yet. Once your dog is successfully retrieving the second named item amongst other items, then we move on to discriminating between the two named items. So before we move on, I want to go over just three important tips so that we can keep them front of mind as we move forward. First, name the item and then the verb if you need to. So ball and then fetch. If the only thing your dog is going to be doing is retrieving that item, you don't necessarily have to add the verb, but it can be helpful if your dog is relatively new to retrieving. Next, make the right thing easy and the wrong thing hard. We wanna build on successful reps so that your dog is feeling really confident about what their job is in that moment. Finally, progress criteria slowly. This means don't start with just having one item and then add a bunch of stuff because they did it well with one item. We wanna make incremental progress over time. This is not a race. We want them to solidly understand the word. And most dogs don't naturally have a good hold on human verbals. They're much more interested in watching our body. So when we take away our body movement from what we're asking them to do, we need to really spend the time and do the reps to get them to understand that that specific word is a name for an item. And if you found this video helpful so far, head on down and boop that like button. Doing so is so helpful for the channel and it lets me know you want more of these videos. Discriminating. Again, our goal here is to make the right thing easy and the wrong thing hard. So we start with the two items, but the one we're going to name is close to the dog, while the other item that also now has a name is further away. Then we can switch up their position to foster correct choices by our dog. As they gain more practice, we slowly move them closer together so your dog is actually starting to have to make choices. Notice how the other item is in the picture each time, but it's easy for her to make the right choice. I wanted to show you this clip here because I wanted to show you what it looks like when she makes an error. So basically I ask for one item and she gets the other item. All I do is put the item back, make it easier for her to be successful, and ask for the original item. Notice that I didn't make a big deal about this. I just replaced the item and asked again. Now, if she had brought me the wrong item a second time, that gives me information that we need to take a step back and go to the last step where she was successful to practice some more. Once they're successfully choosing the named object correctly, we can add in new objects, change up the positioning, and then work in more real life scenarios. Be sure to spend lots of time proofing against distractions. And voila, you have a dog that can retrieve items by name. Really awesome work. So I hope that video was helpful. Be sure to take advantage of that totally free retrieve training webinar over on Patreon by heading over to patreon.com slash and if you feel inclined, join as a paid member and become a part of the community that not only supports what I do here on the channel, but supports each other. You'll also find a complete 10 part series on training the medication alert and retrieve that further flushes out the process of training that complete task to your service dog. And if that interests you at all, you can start by watching this video here on training the medication alert and retrieve. It's going to go over some of my most important tips, so you should click on it now. You all have an awesome day and happy training.